Today we're going to transform your classroom, leveraging Google Docs to create, distribute, and mark your classroom quizzes. Let's take Google Apps for Education for a test drive and learn how to make your effort more effective while providing a better testing experience for your students. Navigate to docs.google.com forward slash a forward slash your school's web address. Enter your user credentials and click on sign in or press enter. So let's get started. On the left hand side column go to create new and select form. At the very top we have three housekeeping options that we should think about in the context of our quiz. Option number one, allow users to edit responses. This will enable our users to edit the responses after they had submitted their quiz. Let's not give our students this much power. Let's leave this unchecked. Option number two, require sign in to view this form. This is checked by default. It's a good idea to keep this quiz private, so we'll leave this option checked. Option number three, automatically collect respondents' usernames. Having a username attached to our students' quiz records will come in very handy, so we can also check this option. The title and description go into the first two fields. The title of our quiz will be Science Power 8. This is quiz number one. Description of the quiz, quiz on cell function, chapter two. And Google provides two sample questions from the start. Let's use them for the quiz. So question number one, which of the following are made up of cells? Helper text provides a field for additional instructions. In this case, since there are more than one possible answers to this question, we'll type in select all that apply. For question type, we'll choose check marks as we want to enable our students to choose more than one option. And the check boxes will look exactly like, the do, like they do at the very top of the page. I'll type in four possible answers. and press on done. But before I click on the magic button, I'll make this a required question, which will ensure that the question is not left unanswered, and then click on done. And here we have our first question. As you can imagine, it gets easier from here. Now, mouse over question number two. On the right hand side, you'll find three icons. Click on the pencil icon to enable the editing mode and we'll follow the same steps from question number one. Question number two. What is the name of the part of the com compound light microscope that you look through with your eye? We'll skip the help text and for question type we'll select multiple choice And I will type in four possible options. Option one, the objective lens. Option, sorry, I'll just make these A through D. Option B, the stage. Option C, the ocular lens. And option D, I'll just have to scroll down here. Option D, the diaphragm. I'll make this a required question and click on done. And now we have two questions. Easy? Let's add a couple more questions to our quiz. To add more questions, we'll have to go to the upper left hand corner to the add item menu. Go to the add item menu, click on the arrow and you'll see different types of questions. For our third question, we'll require a written response. So choose paragraph text, which is the second option from the top. For question number three,
define the function and location of chromosomes. Help text, write at least 250 words. It's paragraph text, it'll be a longer answer. We'll make this a required question as well and click on done. On the last question, let's get some feedback from our students. Go back to the add item menu in the upper left hand corner and select on the question type scale. For question number four, rate the delivery of this online quiz. We can skip the help text. Question types already been selected as, as scale. Scale from one to five, although you can have a greater number than five. One being poor, five being great. Make this a required question and click on done. And we've successfully entered four questions into our paperless quiz. So to preview our effort, click on the link in blue at the bottom of the page. And here it is, a fully functional quiz that you created all by yourself. In the next lesson, we'll learn how to improve the look of our newly created quiz using themes.